What is up family? Lux here from the MD Journey where my job is to help you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. In this video I am going to show you my step-by-step -step technique that I use to manage all my patients and keep all their information in one cohesive manner. It helps me really well on presenting, writing notes, just kind of knowing everything about my patients and helps me do really well in my rotations because all the information is in one place. So if you're a new med student you're, or you're just starting your third year rotation, which a lot of you guys are, this is a great tool and I highly recommend you guys try it out. Um, but if you enjoy this video, definitely like uh, the video, comment below with any questions, subscribe to the channel if you like what you hear. Let's get to the tips, but before we do, you know what time it is, let's get to that intro. Alright guys, so if you're a new med student or if you have been a new med student, you know how difficult it is to grab a new patient that you have and somehow consolidate all their information onto pieces of paper and to be able to find information when you need it. And no one really teaches us a good way of like keeping track of all our patient's info. Their chief complaint, their history, their medications, their vitals, their labs, like how do we keep all of that consolidated? And no one really taught me that when I started uh, as a new med student. So I had pieces of paper every single day that I would write on and it would be messy. It would, would be difficult to find information. And I somehow wondered how my residents were able to just like keep things always in check. They kind of always knew what somebody's lab values were from like three days ago. They always knew what meds they were. I wanted to find an efficient system. So this is something an attending taught me. And so I'm going to teach you guys. Um, I'm currently on the ICU and so I'm managing anywhere from like four to six patients at a time and as you can see like I have pieces of paper and keep these far away for you know um, keeping like HIPAA violations and don't want to show anybody's name all these are just vitals these are the patient's info um, but I have a you know one sheet of paper for each patient that I follow and everything that I need to know for that patient their history their meds their vitals uh, are on here. I'm going to show you how to do the same for your patient and that way you just have to carry one piece of paper guys. One piece of paper for your whole patient's uh, duration of care uh, and hopefully that will be helpful on creating an efficient way and you'll be less stressed out because you just know what information you need to gather. So I'm going to show you that on a new piece of paper with no personal uh, information from a patient. But this is what you do. Grab a piece of paper, blank. Um, I'll link at the very end. Uh, I'll talk about a pre-formatted version of this, but I highly recommend you kind of do it, um, you know, yourself because it's much easier. But create a blank piece of paper and fold it in half. What I want you to do is when you get a new patient, you're going to get this piece of paper and you're going to write down, if we can see that, their name, their ID number, something that your, you know, your electronic medical record keeps uh, track of them, so like your medical record number. Um, this is just something you can give to your attending if they need to look up the patient on the computer, uh, a console if you're calling a different specialty for assistance, their age, and then um, their uh, room number. Um, so that way you know where to find the patient every day. So name, age, uh, room number, as well as their ID. The next thing is when you're first admitting them is have their chief complaint. What do they come in with? And you want to use shorthand guys throughout this. So I'll give you little tricks uh, of the tray that I like to use. For, for example, you know, if they come in with chest pain, don't write chest pain, just write CP. And then you want to write how long have they had it for because that gives you an idea when you're presenting. So also uh, when you're referring back to why a patient was there, you can think about what was going on. So if they were having symptoms for four days, you would write CP for chest pain, add X for times, and then just write 4D. So something like that. So chest pain times 4D. That way if I had this patient, I was taking care of them for like six days and I needed to know, somebody asked them like, why did they come to the hospital? I'd be like, oh yeah, on the eighth they came in with chest pain times four days. Um, so that's another thing you can add is write the date that they were admitted. So I'm just gonna say this patient was admitted on the 12th of August. So that way I can write it down. You kind of know what their first day of care was. And then you can briefly write their history, like what was going on. And a good way I like to do it is you always usually tend to remember people's stories of why they had symptoms. Um, but they usually have a lot of symptoms and they usually don't have a lot of symptoms that you ask them about. That's your review of systems. So I like to create a little plus and minus. And when you're asking them, did you have shortness of breath? And they're like, yes, just write shortness of breath. Are you having uh, fevers? No, no fevers. Are you having 
uh, any issues walking? No, no, the, are you having any headaches? No, you just keep adding a list. That way you can present to your attending. This is Mr. Johnson. He's 44 years old. Uh, he has chest pain for four days and he says he has shortness of breath, um, a little bit of cough, but no complaints of any fevers, abdominal pain, and everything is there. So no issues. Uh, and you have a little bit of room on the side to add in case their history is pretty uh, extensive. Then you get on to kind of where the money is at, which is their past medical history. So you start creating a list of everything they have. So you can do one, two, and then just keep going. Um, and just write like hypertension, heart failure, diabetes. Um, just write their problem, your past medical history. And you can give little descriptions, right? So if they have diabetes, you want to say what's their A1C. If they have heart failure, you want to write their ejection fraction from their last echo. These are things you start to pick up as a, a new medical student, but um, that's not for this video. But you can write the key components without, again, writing the whole thing. Right? You can just write HF for heart failure, EF, 21%. Um, that tells you this person has heart failure, ejection fraction of 21%. And you just keep going down this list. Uh, then you write any surgeries they've had, social history. So uh, you can, again, short term this or uh, you can just shorthand it. So, for example, um, if we're talking about smoking and alcohol, um, give me one second. You could do, you know, plus smoking half a pack a day and you can add the duration for 10 years. No alcohol use. So all of this is very shorthand and it gives you a flow. When you're presenting, you can say person, chief complaint, uh, their symptoms, review of systems, their past medical history, their surgery, their social history. You just flow really nicely. Uh, and then last thing, like you get into their meds. Their meds is a very easy way for us to write a lot without really adding much content. So this is a great way to learn how to shorthand meds. So for example, Lasix is a very common diuretic that many patients, especially heart failure patients, are put on. So what you can do is you can write the whole medication, you can write the brand name, or you can write shorthand. For example, aspirin is ASA, commonly used, so you don't have to write aspirin every time. Uh, Lasix, you can write Lasix for furosemide. Um, so that's the generic name. And then when you're writing the dose, you know, instead of writing milligrams and all that stuff, you can just write the dose. And if they're taking it more than twice a day or more than once a day, you can put it as a superscript. And you can put two or three, you know, how many times they take it. Um, that way it just tells you they're using Lasix 40 milligrams twice a day. And it's really shorthand, you just do that through all their medications. And then I like to add a plus sign next to the meds if they're actually taking them. So you can say, are you taking your Lasix? And they're like, no, I'm not taking it. When's the last time you took it? Three weeks ago. You can put, all right, this person is on Lasix 40 milligrams twice a day. Last time they took it was two weeks ago. It's again, very cohesive um, and it stays with you. That way when you have to present to an attending um, five days later, they're like, oh, what's the person's home diuretic dose? And you can say, oh, they're on Lasix 40 milligrams twice a day, but hadn't been taking it for two weeks. Um, so you just write their medications. Any important studies they have, so I'm on my cardiac uh, ICU rotation, so a lot of them will have stress tests, a lot of them will have cath reports, echoes, and that's where I write these down. Again, shorthand them, uh, and you can create your own system. Try your best to write things where you already know what that means without writing the whole word. Um, and then now we're getting into the meat of the sheet and why it's so useful. So first, we wrote their meds that they're taking at home. Next, we're gonna write the meds that they are put on in the hospital. So a lot of their meds from home may transfer over. So you wanna add those, right? Like this person may be taking Lasix. Uh, oh, there you go. They may be taking Lasix twice a day, 40, and you started them on the day of admission. So they came here on the 12th. But then, you know, when a patient is at the hospital, you may change their meds, you may increase their dose, you may lower their dose. So then you can put an arrow and say what their new dose is. Oh, maybe on the 14, two days after their admission, we increased them to 60 twice a day. And so I write the date that they were on. You add all their medications and so you can continue to add as you add more. If, for example, they were put on a medication like warfarin, maybe they're on warfarin, but you discontinued it. Um, you can write, you can cross it off and you can put the date that you discontinued it on. You can do that for all their medications. It gives you an idea of what they've been on, what your options are in case something's not working for a patient, 
what haven't they tried. Um, so that's a great way of having their meds. This is usually how residents do something of the sort to keep track of all the different types of treatment a patient's been on. The next thing is probably the most important thing that's going to be on this sheet of paper, and that is the patient's problem list. Think about when you present to an attending, if you've been a third year, you know, or if you've been on your rotations, you know the most difficult part is the assessment and plan because this is when you have to play doctor. This is when you have to say, this is my patient and this is what I want to do for them. But often we say the most obvious problem, we give them the most obvious solution, and then the patient probably has like 30 more issues to worry about and we have no idea what we're doing for those. So a great way to do this is on your sheet, have a problem list section and put them one, two, three, just keep going down the list. You can always add more, but you put problem number one, what's the most important thing they have? Oh, this person has heart failure, which is why they came with chest pain, uh, or maybe they had a heart attack. Number two, they have hypertension. Number three, they have you know atrial fibrillation. Number four, they have type two diabetes. And then you can keep adding to their list. So maybe while they're at the hospital, they developed an infection. You can say the date that they, you know, you noticed that. So you can say number five, infection. The way this is useful, guys, is that when I'm done presenting and I have to talk about my plan for the patient, I can just say, oh, for this patient's heart failure, we're going to keep, we changed their Lasix dose today to 60 twice a day. For their hypertension, I'm going to keep them on the same medications that they've been on. And then I can just look to the side to see what medications they're on for their hypertension for their infection. You know, you may write the new antibiotic that you start for their infection. So it's really easy to just look this way because the, usually the most frequent or the most common way of answering a problem is by treating it with medication. So it's a nice way of having that. The last part is kind of keeping track of day-to-day -day things. So on the back and in the middle, if you have a patient that's been with you for the very long time, is you're going to have the vitals of the patient, the labs of the patient, and your to-do list. Um, so um, the first day you will you know, put the date, you will put their vitals and so you will write their temperature. So you will write their max temperature, was this patient febrile, was, what was their heart rate and what did it range in, what was their blood pressure range, systolic and diastolic, what was their respiration, you know, I think what was their O2 sats and then what was their urine output. That's really important for some patients, especially heart failure patients, so your attending is going to want to know that. You know, what were their labs? And then you, if you haven't seen these before, these fish bones and this cross are ways to track things like sodium, potassium. Uh, this cross is really important for blood chemistry, such as like white blood cell count, hemoglobin. So learn these before you start your rotation, so that way you can shorthand instead of writing, you know, sodium 141. You can just put it in one of the boxes. You know, you'll learn which box it is, and then you'll know what that number refers to. Um, the other thing I like to do is I like to, um, for example, the first day they, they get there, you can write uh, what the value is. And like this one you'll learn is box right here is for your creatinine, which represents your kidney functions. And so if I didn't write any labs because this is the first day this patient was admitted, I can put what their most recent creatinine was. That way I can tell the attending today their creatinine is this, yesterday used to be this, maybe their function of their kidneys are getting better or worse. Same thing for this number right here in this box represents, for any of you who don't, don't know, represents their white blood counts. So I can say yesterday they had a white blood count of 11, which is for some people really high, it can represent an infection, and today it's an eight. Um, so it's a great way of telling your attending, I know this number is important, yesterday was this, and today it's significantly changed. Um, and the last part, um, actually, sorry, last two parts, is you can add any important details to their physical exam. So, you know, uh, if they have edema because their heart failure, they have a heart failure issue, um, has their swelling gotten better today compared to yesterday? And you can see how they changed um, throughout the different days as your sheet gets bigger. The last part is I write a to-do list. So what do I need to do? Do I need to call a console? Do I need to talk to social work? Do I need to order new labs? Um, things of that sort. Do I need to call a family member? Just write all those down and then check them off throughout the day for each patient. Then the next day you just do this all over again. You already have this basic info. You can add any medications, any new problems they have, and then write their vitals when you come in. Uh, write their labs when you come in for the day. See them, write their plot, write their physical exam, and then write your to-do list. It's very efficient, guys. I'm like This is a lifesaver for me because I can quickly come in in a hospital, quickly write down their vitals, 
see the patient, see five to six patients in like an hour, uh, write their notes. Um, and this is, saves me so much time. Uh, helps me on my presentations, it keeps me organized. And it's one piece of paper that nicely sits in my white coat and that's all you need. So hopefully that was helpful. If you do struggle because you're a new student, you really don't know what all the information to add, uh, I'll put a link down below to um, a preformed, what's called scut sheet. These are called scut sheets. Um, and that way you can use that one if you desire. The thing about it is that some sections where you really need to write a lot of information, there's not a lot of space. And sometimes where you don't really need to write much, there's a huge amount of space. So, you know, it's a give or take, but uh, I highly recommend transitioning to this once you feel comfortable. It saves you a lot of time, helps you on a lot of different parts of your rotation. You just look much more impressive as a med student. But hopefully that helps for any of you guys that kind of feel lost and overwhelmed in your new rotation of getting more organized and taking control back. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, comment below. I'm more than happy to help and answer more questions. But if you like this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Really always appreciative for all of you guys that have done so, so far. Um, but as always, guys, I will see you in the next video. Take care, my friends.